Shalom and hello, everyone. I am so excited to be here. I have missed you all. And now we are back with uh, Minister Remy, who is here to give us the word of God. I am telling you, you guys are in for such a treat. My brother here has, I, I'm telling you, you guys are about to have your minds blown. Get your hearts and minds ready to believe and receive what the Lord has for you today. And, you know, I'm just going to say a quick prayer and then I'm going to pass it off to my brother so that he can go ahead and do what it is that he has to do. And so right now, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, I just give you the highest praise, which is hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, right now for this time of fellowship, this time to listen and hear and receive your word. Lord, I pray that you would touch my brother, um, Minister Remy, that you will just uh, anoint his lips of clay. Lord, let him be an oracle of God. Lord, I pray that you would just open the gates of heaven and release divine wisdom and divine revelation. Lord, I pray that you will flood his heart with your fire and with your light. Let him speak what thus saith the Lord for your people today. Lord, we love you. We adore you. Thank you and praise you. It's in Yeshua's mighty and precious name. We do pray. My prayer partners and friends said with me because they believe and receive it. Said amen, amen, and amen. And now, without further ado, here's our brother, Minister Remy. Amen and shalom to all of KPG. It has been quite some time since we had this Bible study here on the East Coast on Friday. And I'm glad to be back and teaching. We, uh, I just recently became a father of my little baby Micah, so that that was occupying my time. But now I'm back, and I'm ready to preach the word. And we are glad to have all who are listening online and those who are with us here today. So, last Bible study, we finished chapter five in the book of Romans. Now, for those who are just coming in, we have been going through um, each chapter in the book of Romans and dissecting each chapter. And today, we're beginning chapter six, and the title for today's Bible study is Victory Over Sin. So let us all go to into our swords, and we're going to start from chapter one i'm reading from the king james version what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into jesus christ were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should, serve, we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no, hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in its lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion, dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, I don't know about you, but that was something very 
powerful. But before we dive into Bible study, I want to discuss a few things. As believers, our first federal head that is Adam because of our birth, as it has been since the fall. We learned that from chapter 5, that we were birthed into sin and iniquity due to the fall of our federal head. Yet in chapter 5, we were given hope through Jesus Christ. Now we are in chapter 6, and as we read with our new birth, comes a new head, Jesus Christ. Right here, we see from verse 1 through 14, we see what justification by faith means by granting the sinner victory over sin. And that is through, obviously, Jesus Christ. Now, one quick thing. Justification does not come from us. We could never earn it nor deserve it. We can never find the path ourselves for we are too flawed and born under iniquity and sin to even think of seeking God. It is granted to us by God alone and by his grace alone. For God saves sinners. Now, most people don't believe we are saved that way. Because most people have the desire to believe that we got up and pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps and did it our way, which many would like to call the Frank Sinatra of saving. I did it my way. We go about saying, I did the seeking. I did the inviting. I did the accepting. I, I, I. When that is further from the truth, beloved. Now, most would want to as my teacher Simba will say, begin to stone me, but hear me out here. For I used to think this way, like many others, because the churches I was around taught this type of behavior. Though here at KPG, our goal is to teach the truth. Our goal is to also and always preach the word of God, his gospel. But I want us to read, reread from 1 to 14 again. Because I want us to look at it deeper than to see how many times Paul points out death. So let's read again. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer than in? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also shall walk in newness of life. For if we, were, we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, how many of you were, you know, this is something important. He keeps pointing out death, death, death. Now, many of you here would say, well, what was the point? It's to prove a point that Paul is trying to convey. We are dead as soon as we are born because of Adam. Our will and our inner self is marred. Because of sin. It is in our nature to go deep into sin. 
here's what it is. Sheep. Sheep's natural nature is to always for grass. And the only reason I'm bringing up sheep is its very nature isn't to eat meat. Just as in our nature, as soon as we are born because of our federal head, Adam, our very nature isn't to God. However, does that sheep, when it's stripping up the grass, sometimes grasps at a worm, a bug that are laying on the blades of the grass? Yeah, sometimes. But was it its intention? No, it wasn't. Why is Paul trying to drill this into us? I'm glad you asked. Let's read it again. Now, this time as we read, let's see how many times pa Paul points out being in Christ. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead, dead to sin live, live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him, for in that he died. He died unto sin once, but then that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that ye shall be, so, should obey in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of a righteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as though that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto God. For sin, for sin shall have not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. This is what Paul is trying to convey, is that without Christ, without Jesus, we cannot be saved. We have no victory over sin without Jesus. Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are the ones that do the saving. The Father gave his Son the perfect propitiation to us. The Son, Jesus, dying on the tree, taking on all the responsibilities and sin that were meant for us, being innocent himself, therefore has the power to impute righteousness to us, to those who believe in him and the word, and through the Holy Spirit we are healed and are able to repent and proclaim him as our Lord. So I ask, where are we in any of this process? It's not our words or anything that we do that saves and imputes righteousness to sinners. It's God and God alone. It's his word that saves sinners. There is nothing in those that are born in Adam that can save us or even have a small inkling of righteousness that could lead us to God. It's not within our nature. Those born in Adam are lost and only know the nature of sin and iniquity. Now many would ask, well, did the lost fallen man do something that outwardly looked good? Yeah, but righteousness wasn't his intention. Righteousness to the glory of God wasn't his intention. Many would say, okay, but if someone who was born in Adam does something that looks like a righteous act. Yes, man does this all the time. However, it's if it's self-glorification and self-gratification, 
then the act was not done out of glory and honor to the Father. So therefore, man does nothing for the glory of God. Let's look in Romans 8, chapter 5. I mean, Romans 8, verse 5. For they are that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is at enmity with, against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they are in the flesh, cannot please God. Right here. Anything born in the flesh, born of Adam, cannot please God. That is why is it so important to truly know how important Jesus' sacrifice is. How he sacrificed himself, who was innocent on the cross. And it means for us, born again, washed believers of what we truly have in Christ. Also, this is why it is such a travesty to preach moralism instead of the gospel. I mean, let us all go back to Genesis chapter 3. Verse 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid, him, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God, God called out to, unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Wherefore I commanded thee that thou should not eat. And the man said, the woman whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me the tree and I did eat. We're going to stop right there. Look at the nature of fallen, sinful man. We do not seek God. We seek to shift blame. Self-glorification, self-gratification. Paul in chapter 6 tells those of, of not yielding ourselves to unrighteousness, lusts of the flesh, and other things of sin. And why would we? We have been saved due to the grace of God, and yet many of us allow the lusts of the flesh to creep back in and insult Jesus, the innocent one. And there, then there are times in our life where we go against the grace of God and his law. What do I mean by this? One example each and every one of us can, can understand is marriage. Divorces in this country are horrific. They become a, a craze in our country. And many of these divorces are initiated by so-called born-again washed believers. What does that tell you? And this is how I see it. Lord, your son that died on the tree, who died once for all and became the perfect propitiation for your wrath, which it should have been for us, who paid the price, who imputed his righteousness to us through faith, which is something I can never gain nor seek on my own. But this marriage is something that your power nor death can fix. So come back and die again, because I don't believe you can do it. Wow. Beloved, we are born again, washed believers. We who found new birth by Christ Jesus and leave the old dead sin self in the grave. There's no need to go back reaching into that worm and grime infested hole. Go back to unrighteousness if we believe and repent that the one and only Jesus Christ is our savior 
who was innocent and imputed righteousness to us that we could never gain and gave us a salvation we did not earn. I want us all to study 1 through 14 over the week. Meditate on it. Reread it over and over and over again until it becomes sweet in your mouth. And I give it over to Apostle Simba to close us out. Amen. Wow. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but man, that was a powerful, powerful word. I mean, I can't, I can't wait till next, like Remy, when's, when, when's the next study? Is it next week? Or we gonna have to wait another week? Like you, you, you gotta tell us now. Yes, we'll have, we're having another next week. Oh, thank God. Okay, so we can continue this filet mignon uh, type of meal we're getting here. All right, praise God. All right, so now I I just, again, I am blown away. I am excited. Thank you all for taking part and being part of our fellowship. You know, tune in definitely next Friday to hear more from uh, Minister Remy and then you can um, also join us um, tomorrow for our PAGA um, service. Um, we are so excited um, because God is doing something very special at KPG. And we just want, um, if you want, just come and be a part of it. So right now I'm just going to pray and then that will be all um, for this time. So right now, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, we just acknowledge your holiness. We acknowledge your presence and we just say hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, for just this time of fellowship, this time of hearing and receiving and understanding your word. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to bless this wonderful Bible study. Lord, let it produce much fruit. Let it continue to impact all those who tune in and listen. And Lord, I just pray that you will just continue to bless Minister Remy, continue to bless his kingdom building efforts, bless his wife, bless his new um, born child. And I just pray that you will just continue to anoint his head and anoint his heart and continue to work um, in his life in a great and mighty way. Lord, we just love you so much. You are so good. You are so wonderful. Yeshua you are just King of Kings, Lord and Lord, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And we just exalt your name right here. Lord, we love you. We adore you. Thank you and praise you. It's in Yeshua's mighty and precious name. We do pray while the presence of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and my prayer partners are friends step with me because they believe, receive, and walk in it. Said amen, amen, and amen. We love you. Take care and be blessed. We'll see you next time.